We are never really able, except in the psychedelic state, to transcend the belief in the inner world and the outer world as being somehow separate. Within the context of uh, the alchemical vocabulary, the psychedelic experience as brought to us through plants long in the possession of aboriginal people appears to be the identical uh, phenomenon. And the plants lift the the imprisoning structures of the ego and the ego flows out into the world. Shamanism is essentially a living tradition of alchemy that is not seeking the stone, but has found the stone. The shamans of the Amazon have uh, attained a sufficient sophistication to explicitly understand that the vessel of alchemical transformation is the body and the head of the experience. This is the alchemical vessel. This is where you will encounter the three-headed dog and the queen dissolving in her bath and the incestuous couple that combine soul and luna to produce the white essence of the panacea of the universal medicine. These are psycho-mental processes. Nature is uh, a great distillery of uh, complexity, alchemical gold, novelty, connection. We have re-understood what was forgotten during the reductionist centuries of modern science. We've re-understood that uh, the world is one thing, and it's a living thing. It's a thing with an intent and a spirit. And rational analysis tells us that uh, matter is simply atoms flinging its, themselves through space, obedient to certain mathematical laws that are invariant. And all the creativity, all the sense of connectedness that we experience as living beings, as members of a society, as human beings in contemplation of nature, all of that was denied. And it reaches its uh, ultimate culmination in a statement made by Jean-Paul Sartre, the French existentialist, who said, nature is mute. You understand what I mean? Nature gives no clue he tells you. Man is 
alone in the cosmos with his complexes and his obsessions. He confers meaning. I reject this. I think the entire message of the psychedelic experience, which is that nature seeks to communicate. All being uh, is pregnant with language. All reality wants to include uh, the, the, the human side of nature in its ongoing intent. One of the most famous of all alchemical axioms is as above, so below, meaning always that in every small part of reality there is a tiny reflection of the great overstructure of reality and in the largest structures are hidden the secrets of the smallest and vice versa. We have unconsciously imbibed the ontology of science where we have mind firmly separated out from the world. But in an earlier age, mind and matter were seen to be alloyed together throughout nature. And I think it's very interesting that at this very high-tech moment in our adventure, the plants return and almost stand before us as a, a beacon and a promise. They stand for absolute Tao. They stand for the correct way for life to relate to its environment. If you look around you, the entire global civilization is undergoing some kind of meltdown. Uh, the planet itself is now to be seen as a kind of alchemical retort. The prima materia to be transformed are the nuclear stockpiles, the toxic waste dumps, the industrial wastelands, The I Ching says never confront evil directly and never name it directly because it finds weapons to, to defend itself. We are not an army, so our strategy must be stealth. It's an alchemical strategy. And what do I mean by stealth? I mean uh, the house of constipated reason must be infiltrated by art, by dreamers, by vision. Find the others. Find the others. And then you will know what to do. All truth which springs from the individual is subversive. Find the others and then, using this technology, which was designed to keep track of us, to pick our pockets, and to sell us junk we don't want, use this technology to produce art, massive amounts of subversive art.